Microsoft Teams is a place where you and your colleagues can come together to chat, meet, share, and collaborate on files, as well as utilize other Microsoft 365 apps together all in one place. Sometimes people ask, should I use Teams or SharePoint? Because it seems like they have a lot of common functionality at first. Well, what you've learned so far in OneDrive and SharePoint actually applies directly to what you're going to be able to do in Teams. For example, file permissions and storage is nearly identical. Everything you learned about Microsoft 365 Groups builds the foundation of every team you'll be a member or owner of. It's not Teams versus SharePoint or Teams versus OneDrive, but rather Teams and SharePoint and OneDrive. Teams is largely built upon SharePoint and OneDrive, but adds a layer of rich communication and meeting functionality. Ultimately, Teams becomes a single pane of glass from where you and your colleagues will spend the majority of your collaboration and communication time throughout any given day. Even though working through Teams, you'll work with files in SharePoint, complete planner tasks, update OneNote notebooks, schedule Outlook meetings, and more. No one single app in Microsoft 365 is intended to be used exclusively above all others, but rather together, and Teams makes that possible. We'll start out this chapter by navigating to and throughout Teams. Teams can be used in two main experiences on a desktop, and that could be the actual desktop app, or you could use it through a browser using the web version of Teams. There's also a mobile app, so be sure to check that out for on-the-go access to your chats, meetings, and more. Let's start out by looking at the desktop app, and then we'll look at the web version in just a moment. Here we are in the Teams desktop app. What we're looking at currently is the Teams node of the navigation panel on the left, where we're seeing all of our teams, or you could consider these basically uh, groups of people that you work with on a regular basis around a specific project or a topic, maybe a department, uh, but your organization and your, you, of course, will decide what those teams are and who's a part of those. And inside each of these teams, such as Remote Living, Communications, Market Project Team, we see channels, and we notice that every single team at least has one channel named General. You always start with at least a general channel, and then you expand from there. As we can see in the Market Project Team, so a group of people who are working on something called the Market Project, they have their general channel, of course, kind of like that catch-all or small talk kind of channel, but they've decided to organize their conversations, their files, their meetings, and uh, related assets like recordings into specific topics, kind of like folderizing the work that you do on a daily basis with that team. So from Teams, we're going to move up to Chat, and Chat is where you and your colleagues can come together to have one-on-one -on -one chats or group chats, or you could even have external participants take place in one-on-one -on -one or group chats with people in your organization. You'll also notice that Megan has 48 activity notifications. As people at mention Megan, which we'll get to a little bit later, um, she's getting notifications all the time so she can quickly find something where there was a reaction to a post or where she was mentioned, click on one of those activity notifications and be taken directly to where that comment or that action was. So in this case, I can see that there's a channel named UI UX Copy Guidelines and it's part of the communications team. And this way, I didn't have to go looking for that channel to find this post. I just used my activity feed, and my colleagues kindly used at mentions to make sure I saw that. Just a couple more things here on the left. We've got calendar, which is where you can schedule meetings. And sometimes people look at this and they think, oh no, another calendar. But <laughs> this actually is your Outlook calendar. And if you were to schedule a meeting from here and invite people, it still goes through Outlook, and people will still be invited just like they normally are through Outlook. The benefit to creating a meeting here from Teams instead of from Outlook will become obvious later in this chapter. And there's also different meeting types that we can create from within Teams. We'll talk about those as well. And then the last thing I'll talk about here is files, where you can pick back up where you left off on certain files, access your OneDrive, downloads, and more. Now, other than the main navigation, as you're moving throughout Teams, be sure to make use of the back and forward arrows in the upper left-hand corner to easily go back to where you were coming from. You can use the search to quickly find access to specific files, people, messages, and more. And you can manage your own status and your settings by using the options in the upper right-hand corner. Now, real quickly, we'll just look at the web version as well before we dive into chat. I'll open up my browser. I go to office.com, which we already know is kind of like our virtual desktop. And I'm going to click on the Teams icon. 
So you'll see here in just a moment that the web version of Teams looks a lot like the desktop version. There's just a few things we can't do. So there are certain commands from the search bar that won't work in the browser version. And there's certain meeting functionality that also uh, isn't available in the web version either. But for the most part, you can navigate through Teams and use it fully in the web or the desktop with the exception of just a, the occasional feature here or there. So that concludes the introduction and navigation for Teams. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about one-on-one -on -one and group chats using Microsoft Teams.